Hello everyone, welcome, my name is MJ Pestridge, welcome to another Sim Market Review. And today we're looking at the AccuSim Bonanza for P3D Academic from a to a Simulations. The link for the product is down below in the description, it's priced 52 euros. And this is going to be kind of like a, an in-depth one, so um, we're going to have a look at the exterior, can have a look at the cabin, go for a quick flight, <coughs> while I reel off the specs of this product. Um, so... The A2A Bonanza is a single engine, as you can see, plane, um, kind of like the Cherokee that we pre had a look at earlier, but this is much more faster, more agile plane. Some say the hardest thing for an artist would be to draw the human hand, because it's the part of our body that we are all most familiar with. Simulating the Beechcraft Bonanza V-Tail is like drawing that human hand, though. It really is like a work of art. Additionally, there are many Bonanza variants through the history as well that owners that will know their airplane much better than they know themselves. Um, so this plane has been modeled on an actual real life uh, Bonanza A to A own, and that's how they do all of their planes. Now, of course, with with all of their uh, planes, you get a whole sort of load of extra pop-up menus. You get your maintenance hangar where you can actually go in, change your engine, change the battery. You can actually have a mechanic inspect your plane and give it give it a nice little rating. You also get a map here. Uh, so you can have a look at uh, sort of navigation that where you are. It's got its own fuel manager where you can actually top up here. Um, it's not linked to the default. So any GSX refueling, like for instance, if I click GSX for refueling, it won't actually refuel according to this. This is a separate payload and fuel manager. So the GSX is really just a visual only uh, for it. But as you can see here now, uh, he's inspected everything and it's in beautiful shape. Uh, this is kind of like the first time we've flown this. So I'm going to open the door. It's got its own checklist system uh, here that you can go through. Um, get rid of the maintenance hangar. Uh, get rid of the fuel manager. Uh, we don't need this anymore. It also does come with a, a, a choice of avionics here. You can have no GPS. You can have a little side uh, hustle uh, GPS system. Or you can have the GNS 400, which is what I choose. And I set it up to cold and dark it every time. Um, because that's how I'll leave it every time. And of course here, there's shutters. You can have them open uh, down for the cow flaps. Um and also there is a walk around like most other ga aircrafts as well as your your radio stack as a pop-up as well so uh first things first is we're actually going to climb inside this now i will say that the pbr before we even touch this right the pbr on this plane is for version 4. Um, it's not like I'm using it in version 5 and it's compatible with uh, You know p3d versions 1 to 5. I believe you can also get this for FSX So a uh, little disclaimer. There's three different types uh, of Purchases that you can make on this you can buy the academic uh, or you can buy the professional and the only difference between those is the Sim you're using if you're using the academic version like I'm using you need to get the academic version of the plane if you're getting the professional sim, you need the professional version of the plane. And there is a price difference. They justify it by saying they, they discount for students. Um, or if you have FSX and P3D, whatever version, installed on your machine at the same time, and you wish to fly this in both sims, you can buy a bundle package uh, for about 80 euros um, that will contain a FSX version and a P3D version. I'm just using the P3D standalone in the academic. So for users of the academic license, you know, in accordance with the Lockheed Martin license, this software is only to be used for flight simulation, only not to be used for real world flight training. Um, it's just for, well, I would say it's just for fun, but Lockheed Martin state that it's not an entertainment license. <laughs> it's a, you know, a serious training one. So um, now beyond the modeling of this specific airplane, as I say, the PBR for this plane is ver 
really built for version 4. They really haven't upgraded for version 5 to the full extent that this this could be done in um, and I'm going to show you basically I've done like a tutorial video on how you can actually change PBR for any plane and when you do it will look like this it could then look like this uh, a bit more reflective you know um, adding like sort of my own PBR the plane the metal actually truly does look like metal and sort of glistens now the only issue is the tires but you know it's a small price to pay for a better reflected surface I feel so um, yeah uh, back to what this is um, the, the V-tail uh, Bonanza was built from World War II fighter technology so it's designed for highly trained professional pilots and like most warbirds the Bonanza went to fly so fast it wants to fly fast all the time so unlike general aviation aircraft that were developed in later years to have been benign flight characteristics the Bonanza inherently has all the challenging qualities of the World War II fighters so like this some of the features of this um, is that it has aircraft DNA technology which recreates actual engine and airframe vibrations. What does that mean? It is a living, breathing plane. You have to look after it. Um, you know, you could open up your, uh, your maintenance hangar one day after using it. Uh, oh, and, and like, it, oh, the aircraft's not been inspected, even though we just did an inspection. Um, I've reloaded the sim after changing the model, and now it needs to be inspected. So he's going to have a look at it um, and sort of see what needs to be fixed. It should all be good, actually, because the last state I left it in was beautiful shape, and it's there now. And this really does remember the state you leave the plane in. So if you crash it, next time you load up a di like any model, it doesn't matter if it's a different livery or not, it will be in that same saved state. Uh, the VTEL has physical modeling that which captures the character of this classic aircraft with new analog gauge physics, which delivers a living cockpit unlike ever before. Let's get inside our cockpit actually, and we're gonna start firing her up. So first things first is remove the, the control locks. I'm just gonna do a control test now to make sure that these are free and clear, and then I can remove that. Um, there are some things on the checklist we need to do first before we do a walk around. So I'm going to open the window first. Um, we basically need to lean this on the ground to avoid spoiling the plug. So make sure mixture is zero. Um, and then when we do our run up, we need to make sure that the oil temperature before the run up. Uh, so yeah, first things first though, we need to turn the battery on and the pit out heat, get that running. Um, I'm going to activate the fuel tank as well. There we go. And uh, we're going to basically just sort of like if I was doing this for real on a VAT sim, I would actually turn on my, my avionics and kind of register going, making sure that they're aware I'm here. So um, that first page can be done. Uh, we're now going to do our pre flight inspection. Um, so I'm actually going to turn off, uh, leave the battery on, sorry. Um, let's go outside and let's do our walk around. So I believe that is F8. So it says control lock, remove battery on, check the fuel quantity on the gauges, open the desired tank, extend the flaps, which I'm just going to do now. Uh, the thing with the flap situation on this plane is it's all or nothing I've found. You can't, I, I for some reason I can't set degrees of flaps it's either all flaps or no flaps then it says turn off your battery actually um so we're just gonna leave well, we, well we actually we better turn that off so turn off the battery i mean i don't know how the pit out heater is gonna remain warm but you don't actually need the pit out heater to be warm because uh yeah we're thinking it so right press and hold and that should move like that that has that's good Make sure that there's no degradation on any of these pictures. There's no rusty parts or anything like that. Push that. Uh, nothing's broken here when you inspect the right wing. Make sure the fuel is there. The fuel is actually clear. Got no contaminants inside. Condition of the right wing. So we can just check to see if there's any cracks. Anything that's not here that should be or that shouldn't be here. Remove that remove that um, right wing tank is full beautiful 
uh, check the nose uh, for proper inflation and the tires and the condition of the strut so that's fully inflated and the strut looks sound beautiful uh, check for damage and security on the nose I don't see there uh, clear obstructions if there is you can click that and it will remove any rags that the mechanics are left behind check the oil level we've got nine liters of oil there that's beautiful uh, drain the nose one that fuel is clear the left wing is full uh, remove ooh, remove that remove that and so this is a stall warning tab so clicking this uh, sort of moves that we remove the pit out and we press and hold this and it should be red which it is it's warmed up if it's blue it means the pit out is cool and if you're in cooler climates you might want to activate that to make sure it's okay checking the left wing everything visually looks good i don't see any cracks or any problems here uh check the fuel in the left wing and the fuel to make sure it's contaminated that's good they're good press and hold that that's good that's good now if if there is a problem with any of these you will need to address it otherwise you will find yourself having problems in flight um and nobody wants that so that's all good that's done lock up the, with the key that's done and we're back in the flight deck and we are done that is the pre-flight inspection done right so i'm just going to call because we are going to need a pushback actually and i need them to remove the gpu unit so i'm just going to turn the battery on now uh it says oh hang on wait no turn off the battery sorry it says passengers have been briefed basically what we're going to do is we're going to go for a quick fly around circuit um and that's basically it so flaps can come up uh radios are all off circuit breakers are all in check they are working as well so they can pop out uh all electrical switches are turned off check uh autopilot is off check rotating beacon can be turned on um fuel selectors are on the desired tank check and the gear switch is down check right so engine starting so we're just going to call for a push back now uh, and it says for engine starting the mixture needs to be rich beautiful the prop needs to be full which it is and the throttle needs to be full which it is and then we'll turn these on when we get the no, flight deck this is ground crew standby for pushback door. yep i'm ready for pushback mate when you are okay whenever you're ready mate uh so the q and h at the airport is set 1013 uh the weather is fair it's good locking gear we're only going to go for a quick circuit around so we don't need like loads of visibility up everywhere so gsx works fine with it once you sort of tell it where everything is gsx works perfectly with it so as you watch now they're going to push me back but again this this isn't really part of the a2a simulation this is just a sort of an extra it was on plane take off a land then boom so other things uh that come with this ground crew departure check is complete nose gear steering disconnected for push Release parking brakes. Parking brakes released. Okay, here we go. All clear behind the aircraft. Safe to start engines at your discretion. All right, let's start these up. So other things that come with this. Engines clear. Start at your discretion. Is uh, you have the choice of a 285 horsepower or 300 horsepower Continental engine in the maintenance hangar. It's a true propeller simulation. So you get to experience the world's most like recognizable high performance general aviation airplane. A to A simulations do honestly the best general aviation planes right so battery on alternate battery on green lights check that they're green check uh throttle gets to be correct parking brakes please well, that was quick right that was a quick push back waiting your confirmation for good engine start parking brake is a set mate um auxiliary pump can be turned on uh mag switch to the start and it should start up Boom, she's alive. 
there we go right it says here check the oil pressure and the temperature so oil pressure is in the green the oil temperature should be rising uh, it's kind of staying steady so we shall see uh, it says here mixture lean it while you're on the ground so let's just lean that back down and give it some more juice fuel flow to be sort of in the green so we've got to leave that on it's kind of sounding a bit rough um, the amps is good we're in a charge that's a plus so that's good the mixture is lean the avionics can be turned on now uh, so you also get the um, Garmin here like I said before um, which I, I use quite a lot you also get a two radio stacks and a um, ADF and a transponder which we're going to put on bolt because it tells us to. Uh, cow flaps need to be open which they are uh, so we got navigation light on and strobe is, should be now on. Um, I'm actually going to turn off the, the pit out heat because you know the temperature here is 15 degrees we don't actually need it on. Um, and then we're going to tell them it's a good engine start, as they can see. So radio's on, transponder set to alts, and now we're going to select our height, which we're going to go up to, eh, let's go up to 9,000. And uh, we'll do that as we fly. Heading indicator, I don't actually know what runways are here. We're in Athens, so I'm not actually sure what runways are in use here. So we'll, we'll do you. that. We'll do the uh, heading indicator when we get to the runway. Basically, we're going to set our heading. Nose wheel steering connected. Think Pins removed. Tow vehicle disconnected. Two, one might be. I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, landing ge uh, gear indication is in the green. Radio, we've listened to ATIS. Um, I mean, custom weather here, so we don't really need to know that. Um, brakes, uh, we can test when we initially begin to roll and we will begin going soon so right they are clear right he's given clear me. behind the aircraft yep. left and right yep clear clear we're actually going to also call for a follow me to take us to a runway the one site what was that where's he going right we're all clear so let's call oh, they're not ready they haven't finished their bits and bobs what else do you get? Uh, immersive pre-flight inspection system like you saw, designed by actual real-life pilots while operating the Bonanza V35B. You get an electric starter with an accurate cranking power and sometimes the plane may not start and that's because there is a reason why it hasn't and you've got to figure that shit out why. Right, so runway, we're going to say three left. We're going to request a follow me vehicle. So now that I know my runway, I can set my by heading to 030 and uh, we can start off uh, this here so uh, taxi lights are going to go on and I think that is it so we're going to do an initial brakes test when our dude comes and picks us up Sh should be soon he'll be coming in this direction here he comes look at him speedy Gonzales um, taxi, uh, we've got a, there's a run-up test that we're going to do on the way to the runway um, as well. But we'll just wait for our dude. Oh, that's the flaps. Why are the flaps moving? That should be my viewpoint. That's weird. Huh. Very strange. Right, let's have a look outside. There he is. He's waiting behind me. Okay, so he's good to go. Let's go then. So, brakes off. And we are off. We can test our brakes now. They work. So, while we're doing this, we're going to do our run-up test now. So, it says... Oh, brake. Brake, dude. I'll push my brakes. Parking brake on. Oh. Right, so run-up now to 1700. Which we also need to give it some mixture in order to do that. Uh, 1700 is about there. And then do a mag test here. Um, throttle. Uh, so that should drop, which it did. Yes. So that's got, that's passed all the tests. So bring that back down a little bit. Bring that down. 
and we're good to go again. Magneto's have been checked, it says prop cycle to one to three times, don't really know what that means. And then we got the before takeoff checklist, so let's let's rock and roll this. Let's go. Do a turnaround for our boy here. Take me to your leader, mate. Um, you can also, it says primer only starts are now possible. Um, Accusim monitors the amount of fuel injected and its effectiveness to start and run the engine. I don't, never seen a prime primer in this, so I don't know, like I've never primed it. Um, I don't know where the prime button is and it's not in the checklist. So I don't know what they mean when they say primer only starts, but fair enough. Uh, like I said before, it's a persistent airplane where systems, corrosion, temperatures, they're all simulated when even your PC is turned off. So if you go on a holiday um, for like a week and you come back, man, your plane is going to need some TLC. The engineer is going to go, dude, where have you been? Your plane is a rust bucket and you need to inspect it, you need to clean it, you need to sort things out because I've got a family to pay for, man, and I need work, you know. So I've done something to your plane to make sure I'm in business in the future, you know what I mean? That old chestnut. Uh, it really is an immersive cockpit, physics driven, the sound as well, stereo 3D. Um, it's, uh, it really is a beautiful plane to fly. Like, not just because it's the Bonanza, but because it's from A2A. A2A make the best general aviation in the flight sim world, hands down. So, when they bring their work to other sims, guys, watch out, you're gonna fall in love, all right? Right, we're gonna set our flaps for takeoff, and it's all or nothing with the flaps. Like I said, I don't know why, but I can't get that. Flaps aren't even going down. What is going on? I think these flaps work that much. Uh. What is... I can't set the flaps down. Uh, let's try Let's try it in the cockpit. There we go. Then it works. Flaps are a bit fishy, I, I'd say, I think. I think flaps are a little bit... Something going on there with the flap system. So, it says flaps down. So um what else does it say um well we're not actually on the thing you get so let's wait till we get to the runway athens looks a bit busy here a lot of a uh, traffic going around a lot of going on here beautiful sea like or area that athens sits in the greek islands so don't forget overheating is a thing if you overheat your engine it can score the cylinder head walls which can ultimately lead to failure if warnings are ignored and overly abused now if you want to check your plane basically at its shift to it says here cabin is cool and steady and it tells you all about your engine so um, takeoff power settings everything here and your checklist so you, you can actually tell if you are abusing your plane um, look at it the big boys are here we're flying with the big boys um, it's a piston combustion engine, uh, which is modeled fully. So you got to remember when air comes in, it mixes with the fuel and ignites. Parts move, heat up, and all work in harmony to produce a wonderful sound of this engine. And if you don't do it right, you will find out in flight. And that's that's a new saying I've just made up on the spot. I quite like that. If you don't do it right, you'll find out in flight. That I'm I'm I'm, I'm copywriting that, mate. That is my IP now. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's all based off a real uh, plane. Like I said before, you also get a manual provided with it, sort of how to install it. You can actually download that now from their website, uh, or from the Sim Market, um, and it's only fifty-two euros. So it's it's. You might think oh, that's not quite a lot for a general aviation plane, but dude, look what you're getting. You're getting the next step up from a single engine Cessna or Cherokee. This is your first step towards double engines. You know, you've got a lot more to handle here. I would say after this, you're flying the caravan, you know, in terms of what type of plane, you know, as you're working up to the uh, Airbus or Boeing planes, you know. Where is this dude taking us? There's runways over here, mate. Can we, why are we turning right? Is this, is this dude taking us on a tour of the airport or something? I reckon he works for the tourist industry. He's like, come have a look at my beautiful airport. 
To your left, you can see a lovely British Airways. To your right, it's the guards. There's the tower. Dude, I mean, it's all... This is beautiful, this is. Like, I love this. Again, I'm using P3D version 5. Um, it's made for FSX and P3D versions 1 to 5. So, currently, uh, it doesn't have, it seems, a X-Plane or Microsoft version. But I'm sure in the future, they will be bringing that. Right. Uh, 300 on the old elevation, so we're not too bad. <coughs> we can mixture full rich when we take off. So, um, basically, I always, what I, the way I tend to use these fuel tanks is I drain it down to, like, a major marking here, and then switch my tank and then drain this. And that way it keeps the fuel in balance with the plane, because if you, like, as you fill up, if you just fill up the one side, you'll see your aircraft lean to one side. It's pretty cool. And if you just drain off, if I did not switch my fuel tank down there at all, I would literally be flying heavy on one side, which is going to change the dynamics of your airplane in flight. So, really got to be careful there. Right. So, he's taking us across the bridge now. This is it, man. I feel like I'm on the motorway here. Look at that. Cars going down the motorway. Beautiful. Uh, right, so we might as well just continue this. We've done the control check. We were on the desired tank. It does say fuel pump off, but this fuel flow is not in the green yet. So I'm going to mixture full rich this bitch and uh, get the fuel tank in the, in the green there. We need that uh, fuel flow in the green before I can turn off the pump. Which, it's in the green now, so pump can go off. Uh, prop fully in, check a engine gauges, make sure that they are working as desired. Check. Trim tab set to neutral, check. Flaps are set, cow flaps are open, and then we... Whoa! Hopefully don't scare this dude off. Oh, we've scared him, he's scared! He's scared, we've scared him, right. I'm just going to uh, find my own way then, I guess. Bloody hell, we've scared that dude. Right, uh, runway is that way, so we need to turn left. It's alright. He obviously gets scared easy when a plane comes up behind him. I mean, you work at an airport, mate. What do you expect? Airplanes everywhere. But he's gone now. He's left us. It's fine. I'll find my own way, mate. It's fine. I'll just taxi down here. And then get on the runway, which I think is to my right, so it's all good. I mean, to be honest, this plane, I could take off right now on this taxiway if I wanted to, but we don't want to, so. Keeping it, keep the fuel cycling through, we don't want to stall her out. So basically, yeah, we're just going to do a quick circuit here. Um, we're going to go sort of up and around and land back in. So, where was that? Are we on the highway? Is that a highway sign? Dude, I don't think we're on the highway here. Did I take a wrong turn out the airport? I don't see any car traffic. <laughs> Ikea's here though. Dude, I think I'm on the highway here. That looks like a highway sign up ahead. Yeah. We're bombing down the runway. We're bombing down the taxiway here. Right, I'm going to do the next turn off because at the end of the day, I don't need um, a full runway to take off on. You only need to get up to 70 miles an hour for this bird to fly, so we're actually going to nip across here um, to the runway. Take this exit here. It's funny how it doesn't say that before you take off, you put your landing lights on. Before takeoff, I'm guessing it should be done on the runway. Right, so this is the runway now, I think. I think this is the runway. No entry. Right, can't go that way. No entry. Do you know what? It's flight simulation, mate. You do what you want. No entry. Bullshit. I think this is the runway. Yeah, this is the runway, I'm pretty sure. Obviously in Athens they got some sort of one-way system going on. Right, landing lights on, 
taxi lights off. We are set for takeoff. Flaps are set, cow flaps are open, doors and windows latched. Shut that window. Uh, put your headphones in so uh, we can hear the control tower and all that shit. Uh, slowly advance the throttle and then manifold the fuel flow, the RPMs. Check that they're just all in the green. Alright, so I don't see any airplanes getting on. I can't see behind me because the curtains are closed. Right, let's just go. We should be good here. So, here we go. Rock and roll! Now that shouldn't be hitting the red on the tachometer. So, rip on that. Uh, take off, full throttle, rotate at 77, which we are. Boom, we're up. Let's rotate! We're up, and she looks like she's given a bit of jib here. So, trim up. Whoa! Wheels up. Flaps up. There we go. She's flying a bit better. There we go. She's steady now. She's steady. See the vibration then happening? Man, it really sort of made me nervous then. <laughs> uh, right, so climb out at 96, so we need to pitch up a bit more. I'm actually going a bit too fast. I'm going to bring down that to 25. Um, and then just mixture. Play with that mixture to get that where I want it. Um, 95, 96 is, seems to be. And that's basically it. You climb out 2500 RPM. Best angle is 77 knots. Uh, which we can actually go a bit higher. And check the fuel pressure. Everything's running fine. So we'll just get rid of that now. Now, autopilot. Let's turn this sucker on. So, uh, autopilot can... Uh, first off, flight director should be on. Didn't actually tell you to turn the flight director on. Um, so there we go. Autopilot can go on in heading mode. And it will hold this heading now for me. And if I arm the... Uh, the sort of altitude here. When we get to 9000, it will hold it on there as well. So I can kind of ease back on my joystick now. I don't have to hold it. Um, for I just trim for this but we're good for speed it's a bit bumpy here bit of a bit of a wind here gotta be careful so uh, as we climb up I can just trim up flaps are up use the trim uh, all these lights are fine I'm actually going to we should be good but I want to put the pitot eater on just in case um, and all is good. All is good. All seems very fun. We're, we're climbing at a nice rate. Uh, let's have a look at what she looks like from the outside. So there you go. Beautiful. Look at that. Glistening metallic shine. Looking very nice. Beautiful. So we're basically going to come back and land at the other runway. Or this runway, rather. So 3,000 feet start leaning out this there we go keeping it at 25 on the old rev meter so we want to reduce the throttle a bit there we go she's going down a bit so there we go climbing very nicely so this this means nothing this so yeah we're flying over uh, thingy so once we get probably I'd say about 5,000 feet we're gonna start our turn and come back in um, I mean 9,000 is a bit excessive perhaps maybe we just go up to six we don't need to go that high but she's running beautiful and don't forget, like, you can't just sit here looking at your scenery. You actually do have to monitor your systems here. So we've got, obviously, our altitude. You know, we've got to make sure that we're thinning out the fuel uh, from the engine as we ra uh, raise higher through the atmosphere. And as the air gets thinner, it doesn't require as much fuel to ignite uh, and run the propeller. Uh, if you do, you can flood your engine. Uh, the speed, we want to make sure that we're at a safe airspeed for climbing at a steady rate. Uh, we could actually probably pitch up a little bit more than we are. Uh, so pitch up a bit. 
Um, got to obviously monitor your fuel flow, uh, your manifold pressure, your revs, to, so you don't damage your engine. Uh, obviously check in at the same time where you are in the world, your navigation, making sure that you can actually see where you're going. So we want to uh, be turning soon, to be honest. Um, as well as that, you got to be looking at your fuel gauges. So when your tank begins to drop down to a certain level, you want to switch over the tank down here so your plane doesn't lopside. To be honest, there is a lot to consider here. This is not a uh, flight management computer, just key it in and then sit back and go, ah, I'm going to go make a cup of tea. You literally have to stay in the cockpit and fly the plane quite a lot. Um, it is pretty, pretty intense, really. Oh, what have we got down here? Look at that. <laughs> he says, looking out the window, looking at the scenery. <laughs> right, so we're coming up to our uh, 6,000. We're going to pitch up a bit more. I'm going to start thinning out the fuel a bit more. Uh, we need to probably push that up a bit higher. We don't want to overcook our engine, though. You really do have to take care of this. You've got to love it. Again, always be checking the pilot's notes here. So it says, cabin is cool and steady. That's good. It tells you everything you need to know for your climb rate, your cruise, your checklists. It really is good. So there's our 5,000. So that's basically to say um, we're about to hit our altitude. Look at this. Hey, the Mediterranean is just so bloody gorgeous, isn't it? It's so beautiful. It just makes you want to live there, doesn't it? You know? Like party central, I reckon. Right. Anyway, let's uh, let's start our turn. So basically, we want to now be going one, two. Um, and we're going to be landing on pretty much the same runway we took off at. Check out the window. See where the airport is. There it is. This is the runway we're going to be landing at, but we need to turn around and go downwind first. So we can do another turn now, actually, uh, to fly past that runway. The autopilot in this plane compared to the Cherokee is a little bit more better, a little bit more, um, you know, Intuitive, so you can actually set things and then like it will handle it. It's actually got a flight director basically rather than being a pilot assisted autopilot It's actually got a bit of intelligence behind it So it wasn't exactly a tight turn now. So now we're at 6,000 feet. It's actually gonna hold me here so uh, as indicated by the flight uh, computer here or the flight director altitude is being handled and the heading is being handled so I can now kind of sit back and relax, although we've got things to do. So now that we're in cruise, we close our cowl flaps. Uh, power is set. Uh, we want to aim for 2100. So basically, you want to sort of mixture and propeller out this thing to get the everything in the green, basically. So that's not good. And then bring that down. And that's probably about right yeah that's probably about right so we can now go to one and we're going to basically fly down here and then come back in and land the same kind of runway we took off from oh look at this obviously you got your your things here you can put them down if you want oh no, wait there we go the, the visors it's a bit a bit fruity but put them up we don't need them gorgeous I mean even the outside model I think is really well done uh, PBR aside this is a fantastic plane purchase you know um, if you really want a challenge of GA flying this is it you know not available in Microsoft or explain yet but I hear that they are actually working on the Comanche for Microsoft at the time of making this video. It's not out yet, but it will be. Right, we're actually going to start our descent now. So uh, we are up for here. So approach landing, it says autopilot off, but we ain't going to do that just yet. Fuel tank selectors, we will swap over in a second. Um, 
we will uh, basically start to descend down. So I'm going to set this now for 3,000 and I'm going to pitch the plane down using my trim to get down to the 1,000. Obviously, I'm going to have to reduce my throttle, you know, which means I've now got to increase my prop and my mixture to make sure I don't kill the engine. Because obviously, as I tip my plane down to descend, um, which it should be, it should actually be descending me. Oh, it down! You can also push the button here, down, and it will it will do that as well for you. But I can do it myself. There we go. Obviously, if you pitch down while you're traveling, your speed increases. You know, as you lose your altitude, you trade that off for speed. I don't know why it's fighting me. It's not actually going down. There we go. It's coming back up again. Dude, go down. 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 So, let's get rid of that. Oh, we didn't arm it. That's why. We need to arm it. There we go. Now it knows we want to descend. Now I can trim down and it will actually trim down. There we go. Now it's accepting it. And we're going down. And obviously my speed will increase, so I need to lower my throttle. So I don't overkill it. You know, it's got to keep everything in the green. If everything's kept in the green, you're laughing. So with this not being in the green, let me just bring that back a bit. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So by the time we get down to 3,000 feet, we can turn in for our final. Airport is just down there. Uh, right, so I'm going to swap over my fuel tank now. So we basically flick it. Oh, that's a bit. Goes the wrong way. Goes the other way, the Cherokee. Uh, mixture says rich. So uh, cow flaps are closed. Mixture rich. I'm going to propel her rich it as well. Um, gear will be down. Gump. Check. I don't know what a gump is. I know what forest gump is, but I don't know about the gump in this thing. Um, so we've swapped over the tanks. We've checked our fuel levels. We're good. We're mixture rich. The altimeter has been set for 3,000. I'm not actually going to take that down to 2. Um, so this will take me down. It's taking me down at a nice airspeed. We're passing the airport. We're ready for our turn. Um, the air runway is zero three, and we're going to be pulling out some flaps. The maximum speed you can use your flaps at are 123. So we're just kind of waiting to get down to the right level. Once we get down to 3,000, I will turn because we now have passed the runway, as you can see, just back there. So that is now passed. Probably go out to the coast and come back. Oh, look at those clouds. Right, so 4,000. I'm going to reduce my speed a bit. I want to put my flaps out soon. I can't actually make sure change it, but right. So three thousand eight hundred. As soon as we hit this coast, we can turn around. Good thing I didn't go up to nine thousand feet, eh? Right. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on base. My base turn. And in five, four, three, two, one, turn. Turn on base as we still descend.
And then obviously we're waiting for uh, the plane to level up with the runway, which is 03. So now we're at uh, coming up to 2,000 our feet. Uh, airport should be there. There it is. So now we're waiting to turn on final. Landing lights are on. What's the checklist, Charlie? Say. Uh, propeller high RPM, gear down, and then that's basically it. So we're waiting for the gear. So wait for when we line up at a runway, which it's coming in. So I'm going to turn the autopilot off now. I've got control of the plane, so autopilot is disengaged. I have the plane. Uh, we're going to put the gear down. And we're going to turn on final. And as we drain off our speed, we can put some flaps down. So flaps can go down now. And we can pitch down a little bit faster because we've drained off that speed to get down to the height we need to be at. There is the runway in sight. We are on a final approach. Perfect. Everything's going good. You can hear the noise of the flaps. So we need to slow down a bit. Even though the flaps are down. Even though they say they're still up. What? Oh, come on, dude. Go down. Right, there we go. Now we're, now we're going down. Put our bit more engine in. We don't want to stall this thing out of the sky. So, trim up. Trim to level it off. Alright, coming in. It says we're all good, but it's a bit windy woo. Trim up. It says we're too high now. Alright, let's go down. There we go. Coming in. Two blue two red, two white, perfect. So we're landing gear down, three green check. Altitude 1500. If Pappy say I'm on perfect approach, they've changed their mind. They're set up too high now. Speed is sort of. Uh, what's the landing speed on this? What did it say? Uh, 100 or 123 is the maximum for the flap. So you I suppose you want to be landing between 100 and 120, I guess. So we're probably a bit fast coming in at the moment, but we are coming in just over the highways here. It says we're perfect, so there we go. Speed is good, height is good. We're coming in very nicely. And then obviously you'd announce and tell them what's going on. You know, crazy man landing on your general aviation runway. Right, so a bit more power. Too much. Bring it in. We don't want to stall her out. She's coming in nicely. We've got loads of runway. It's a... This is a general aviation plane, so we don't need that much runway, but we are a bit high, so let's get down and boogie. Here we go, coming in. Still nice on the old pappies there. Oh, it says we're a bit low. Well, I think we're just right, mate. And here we go for the touchdown, for the win. Obviously, I'm not, ra I'm not rating my landing here, so... But we do want to make it nice because we don't want to damage the plane. We're floating. Come on, touch her down, touch her down, touch her down, touch her down. Here we go. Oh, rough landing that. That's going to cause us some damage, I bet, on the old uh, mechanic side. Right, so now it says after landing. Uh, landing and taxi lights required so flaps can come up. And trim back to normal. So trim needs to come down. Tr 
trim set back to normal and that will kind of slow us down there we go trim done uh, we are just rolling so we can apply some brakes to come off there we go we're now at a stage where we can come off but we've just missed that one so we shall get the next one uh, cow flaps to be opened so open up the cow flaps um, and we're ready to get off the runway and I'm also going to turn off my ta landing lights turn on the taxi lights and take off the mixture a little bit and there we go basically that is it guys thank you so much for watching this video uh, don't forget I run a giveaway for sim market vouchers every single month 50 euros in fact can be yours all you have to be is a subscriber on my youtube channel put a comment down below in any one of my p3d videos and at last friday of every single month when i go live on youtube for a sort of like vlog i announce the winner and 50 euros can be yours to buy uh you know sim market add-ons for anything so jump in on the giveaway uh, once I get to 5,000 subscribers, those Sim Market vouchers will go up in price. Um, it won't be 50 euros. Um, it will be a higher denomination once I reach 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, it's just my way of saying thank you for all the support. I'm lost already. I don't know. The airport's over there. But anyway, guys, that's it. That's all you need to see. You don't need to see me shut this sucker down. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, take care. I'll see you in the next one. A bit fast.